players in the top five vote getting for the MVP. Um, I, I mean, this is a very wide question here, broad question, but can you put into perspective just how unique that is to have two players such as Brock Purdy and Christian McCaffrey who have played at such a high level for you? Um, it is unusual. I, I mean, I think to get to where we have been or to where we've gotten and to do it at the level we've had, you, you should have some players. And I know we got some defensive guys up for some awards too. Um, but having both of those guys in the run and the pass game, what Christian does in both, and really what Brock's done in both, they've both been unbelievable and one of the biggest parts of our offense. Hey, uh, Fred and George, in a lot of ways, are the emotional team leaders. Were you guys on their respective side of the ball? What do you see in them as prospects, and how have they developed that leadership as they've gone on in the NFL? Um, I mean, I think they developed it the more they played. I mean, they didn't come in, they weren't like that right away. They came in and they were both pretty quiet, but they both worked as hard as anyone. They were the same every single day, off season, regular season. I always mess with George, go back and watch him this first year. He didn't have wristbands on, wore socks real weird, and had a clean cut haircut. Like, in the second year, he was a WWE champ. So, um, once these guys start playing and you play at a high level, you kind of get comfortable in your own skin. and. When you play that well and you work that hard and you're that consistent, it makes it pretty easy to be a leader. Yeah, Kyle, um, you've been asked a lot about how being the son of Mike Shanahan was an advantage for you to to get here, but there's been hundreds of uh, kid coaches, or coaches' kids, who didn't get to where you are. Is there anything that was unique about advice he gave you or lessons he taught you that may have been, you know, helped you more here or anything you did um i mean i, I think i mean being a coach's son i was very fortunate to just be around it so much especially at the nfl level you know, my dad went to the nfl um, when i was four years old so just being around it almost my whole life you don't realize how much it helps you until you get in it and you just realize a lot of the stuff you've been around and it makes it a little easier but um i mean i think not only was the son of a coach, but my dad's the best coach I've ever been around. And so to be around that good of one, I think also was a huge advantage for me. And um, I mean, he never was really training me to be a coach. He was just being my dad and, and just the way he went about everything, just how direct he was with people, how honest he was with people, how hard he worked. Um, maybe ne he didn't always like what he had to say, um, but he was going to tell you the truth. And just as a son and as someone you work with, uh, to me, that's all you can ask from people. Thanks, Hey, Kyle, how you doing? Good, thanks. Yeah, just to follow up on that, that same thing with you and your dad, was there a moment where you just kind of had an epiphany that you wanted to be a coach and that you wanted to follow in your dad's footsteps and did you talk to him about that and, and what did he give, what kind of advice did he give you about pursuing it as a career? Um, I mean, I was always in my dad's ear every second, annoying the heck out of my sister and my mom, every meal we probably ever had together, a car ride. Um, just ask some questions about football. I love football just as a true fan. I love playing in the backyard all the time. Uh, I remember right in eighth grade um, telling him how I wanted to play professional sports. I wanted to earn a scholarship and which sport should I try. And I know football will probably be the hardest one for me. And I remember him telling me on this long car ride how you just got to commit to it and do it. And I remember setting up a plan then on how to work out and do all this stuff. And from, from that standpoint on, I was always trying to be a player. Um, trying to get a scholarship, trying to play in college, things like that. And I think once my fifth year hit and the reality of what it was as a player hit, um, then I think when I started to think about it, I was like, you know what, I think I want to coach. I don't want to stop being around football right now. And you know what, I think I've actually kind of been working on this my whole life because it's a little bit easier um, than playing. And, and I think it just kind of naturally happened. Kyle, what do you think it is about Brock Purdy that he's able to adjust his mental focus on um, crazy media circuses like this and then the biggest game of his NFL career. Um, that's, I think, the most special thing about Brock. I mean, just, he doesn't have to change much because that's really who he is. I mean, Brock is as humble of a person as I've ever been around. Uh, I talk about him having just a strong set foundation on who he is. and uh, It's rare I think people have that. Coming out of high school, I bet he had it, just looking at what he did in college and how people speak of him. Um, I know when he came to the league, you can see it on him right away. You've seen it through everything. I mean, the third string quarterback, the starting quarterback, what he's done this year, I mean, he's still the same guy as he was the first day. And uh, You can ask him. I think it has a lot to do with his faith, how he leads his life, but it carries in everything he does. In Florida National News here, you talk about the relationship with your dad and, and getting into coaching. It's a little unique because you got Christian and his dad, and they won three Super Bowls together. Is it, does that add to the relationship that you have with a special player like Christian? 
Um, I mean, I just, I was so close with Christian's dad growing up. I mean, he was the, him and Rod Smith were the two receivers on the Broncos when I was throughout high school trying to be a receiver. Those were the guys I tried to cut my shoes like, wear the same shoulder pads, um, meet him after school to run routes and do workouts throughout the summer, everything. So those were like, and his dad was such a gym rat and just such a technician. And um, him and Rod taught me almost everything I know about playing, which gave me a chance to play. And, and it was just so funny watching Christian over the years, hearing about him in high schools to at Stanford to going through the draft and everything. And I uh, just couldn't believe how talented he was. But I also knew his dad and how psychotic his dad was with his work ethic and just attention to detail. And that's what's been so neat, uh, trading for Christian and actually getting to know him. And just I feel like I'm watching Ed half the time. Um, Lisa, the other half, she had probably a little better personality, which is in Christian. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's funny how the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. And I'm sure they got some similarities watching me with my dad. Kyle, uh, it's right over here. Hey, uh, it's well documented. You obviously had to go through some excruciating postseason losses. The loss to the Chiefs in the Super Bowl, kind of where does that rank um, as far as levels of pain? <laughs> um, I mean, I think anyone who loses a Super Bowl probably ranks that up there. I mean, I, I know, I remember I always seeing my dad after, as a coordinator and stuff after those three Super Bowls when he was in Denver and I was younger and how, how hard it was on him. Um, so I think anytime you get that close and you lose it the last one, that's definitely the hardest. Um, but it's, you also, all football games are hard to lose each week. You put so much into them. That's why the more you coach, the more you realize, like, when you win, you're just kind of relieved, so you can get right to the next Monday and get ready. Um, everything's trying to get to that last week, and uh, we did get to this last week, and uh, this will be our last Wednesday. This will tomorrow. I mean, our last Tuesday. I mean, Friday will be our last practice, and Sunday will be our last game. And you're always hoping you're the team that wins that last game, and that's our goal this week. Hi, coach. Is there anything in particular you're feeling about going into the chess match uh, that is going to be against Andy Reid? Um, same as you always do. I mean, Andy. As good as there is, especially you know him running the offense and um, Spags on the defense, as good as there is, and they've both been doing it for a long time. We've all gone against each other a number of times, so uh, I think the schematics can get a little overrated. Um, we all have real sound systems, and we all have real good players, so we'll see how it unfolds on Sunday. There's been talk over the last week about a lack of defensive effort in the last couple of games, and that was going to change. How have you seen that group really change their focus this week? Um, I think they've been about the same. You know, I know there's been a lot of talk about effort, which um, showed up on a couple plays in particular. But um, you know, that wasn't our best on those um, couple plays. But that definitely wasn't why we struggled stopping the run. Uh, there was a number of other things we had to detail up. You know, when you play an eight-man front, it just takes one guy to get out of a gap for if there's only be one guy left, and um, that's stuff we got to do a lot better at. But our guys take a lot of pride in what they do. Uh, they work hard in every every day, practice games. Um, since I've known him, so I don't expect to be any difference on Sunday. Kyle, to your left. How much did it help when you were developing Brock that you had so many pieces in place on the offensive line and at the skill positions to where you didn't have as much of a concern about bad habits forming because of protection or because of lack of options in the passing game? Um, I don't, not much. I mean. And last year we went into the year with a, a guy starting center for the first time in his career. Never started a game before. Our right guard had never started a game before. Our left guard was going into his second year. Um, you know, so I mean, I think we did have some inexperienced guys. Uh, it wasn't really about developing Brock. It's, Brock was a really good player when he got here. And he got thrown into a position and he competed with other guys. And, um, and then he got his opportunity because he was hurt. And when he came in, he played at a high level right away. There was no time to develop him. We just had to throw him in. We were trying to win, had a chance to make a run to the playoffs. And he came in and we thought we hoped he would be good because he wasn't practiced, but he was even better in the games. And he didn't lose a game that year um, that he finished and did a hell of a job. And now he's developing with everyone else. I think as he gets better, the whole group gets better. And we've got a bunch of guys now who played over a year together. And um, I think it's shown. Let's say three more to the right, Carl. Coaches who have, uh, back to <laughs> Coaches who have worked with you in the past say you require a lot from them in terms of answers when they're suggesting a play. First of all, where does that come from? And second, what does it mean to you that a lot of them say that that's kind of an integral part of what has made them better individually successful? 
Um, I, I guess, I mean, that's just how I am. I, I don't come up with anything very fast. I mean, you, you can come up with a lot of stuff just looking at one thing or having one idea, but you got to check it with everything. You got to go through all fronts, all coverages, all formations, all adjustments, um, contingency plans. Are guys good enough to do it? Is the second choice good enough? What's the percentage of hitting it? Um, there's, there's just so many things that go into it that I feel like I've always kind of been OCD about, and it can kind of be exhausting in the week to finally decide on some things because of all the stuff you got to check. But um, people who tell you that story are probably guys who came at stuff a little too fast. And once you start asking them question two, three, and four, if they haven't thought about those stuff, I kind of have no patience for how they even brought it to you because I. I torture myself like that, so I feel like I should torture those guys too. Uh, yes, uh, Kyle, levels of pain, where, where does 51 fit? And then, um, you know, Raheem coming back to Atlanta, maybe he can go back and, and maybe fix that one for you all. Um, I mean, yeah, it's just right there with the other Super Bowl. I mean, I've, I've been able to coach in two Super Bowls, and you lose either one of them, both of them are heartbreaking. So, in terms of pain, I've, I mean, I've broken my arm, my collarbone, a lot of things. So. Um, those are more painful, but um, those things last a while, but it's all about getting back there again, and that's what I'm excited for today. And Raheem, I'm more than excited for Raheem. Raheem's, to me, been one of the one of the best coaches I've ever been around, uh, especially as a defensive coach. It was unbelievable what he did for me the year in 16 on offense, and um, Raheem's a stud. You guys are in good hands. Kyle, right here. Uh, you alluded to this when you got up there. Uh, no injuries to report, so I'm just double-checking. Kittle's good to go, and... Um, are you expecting full participation in Wednesday's practice? And uh, just what is that? How valuable will that be? Uh, I am, but since I didn't have to give a report today, I haven't talked to the trainers yet. So, but I'm expecting it to be pretty positive. Stacy, last question. Hey, Coach. Stacy Dale's NFL Network. Uh, Greasy was talking to me, I'm back here, yesterday about Brock playing with conviction, and you have to have an aggressive mindset to do that. How, how much more aggressive have you become as a play caller because of Brock, and how has he elevated you in many ways? Um, I mean, definitely. Your ebb and flow with how you call plays changes with your players. Um, of course, with the quarterback, but also with everyone else. I mean, the O-line has a factor, the, the eligibles you're trying to get the ball to, how the defense is playing. So everything affects your play calling. And I've been fortunate enough to be able to call plays for a long time. There have been a lot of different situations. But um, having Brock... Um, it's been a lot of fun. I mean, you could feel it last year. Just each game, I got more comfortable with him, seeing what he could do and how aggressive he is. And um, sometimes guys are aggressive, you get a little too aggressive, and then all of a sudden you get them in trouble and you got to pull it back. And um, But Brock's been pretty impressive with that stuff. Uh, usually when it's not there, he makes the right decision as consistently as anyone I've been around, and uh, he's been real fun to call plays for. All right, guys, thanks.